Hi, Karen Alari here. Glad you could join me. Today we're going to be painting a quick study. Quick studies are a great foundation for improving your skills and making a better painting. A lot of my students, the first thing that they say is that they want to learn to loosen up, and this is a great way to do it. We're going to be using a small format for this painting, just 5 inches by 7 inches, and I'm using a canvas panel, very inexpensive, and one flat brush, a synthetic brush, about 3 eighths of an inch wide. You want to, this helps you stay away from detail and focus on the big picture. I'm using open, golden open acrylics for this painting. They have a little more uh, workable time. They stay wet a little longer than the regular acrylics, so they're great for these little studies. I'm also using uh, quinacridone gold and Hansa yellow in the regular acrylics just to lay down a base coat uh, and so that it would dry quicker. But you could go ahead and use your open acrylics for that. You would just have to probably do that the day before you want to start painting so that they would be fully dry. So the first thing that we're going to do today is a thumbnail sketch. And we really have a tendency to want to skip this step, but it's really important. And in doing these little studies, the whole idea of them is to practice and practice your beginnings and your big picture part of your painting and not think about all those little details. And one of the really important beginnings in your painting is your composition and your values. So you can see in on the screen the reference photo I used for this little painting and then my little thumbnail sketch. So this sketch is only, it's, it's at half size, so it's two and a half inches by three and a half inches, just using a pencil. And what you're going for here is trying to compose your elements in a way that's pleasing and to figure out where your dark mediums and lights are going to be in just a really simple form. I knew that I want this background to stay light. There's some mediums and some lights back there because it's sunlit and then the sunlit aspect of it is really highlighted by having this shadowed area of trees in the forefront. So you can see I've just played around with my values and my shapes and placed them on the canvas in a good composition by using uh, what's called the rule of thirds which is dividing your canvas into thirds both horizontally and vertically and this creates kind of a tic-tac-toe pattern and where the lines intersect that's a good place to put your focal point. Thinking about your focal point is really important in this uh, little exercise so my focal area is going to be right where that very dark tree meets the very light background and the colors the values and the shapes in that area or where I want the eye to go and be drawn and then it can move around the painting from there. So take your time to really simplify your shapes just get them down to a few areas. I've got my background, my water, my foreground, my darkest tree. You notice that I've thought about how those all that background foliage is going to go and there's a uh, brownish still still kind of winter tree without much foliage on it on the right and I decided to kind of move that over to the right a little bit and simplify what's back there down to one large tree next to the dark tree a couple of small trees in the middle a tall evergreen tree and then that brown dead tree and just a simple bank coming down so thinking about simplifying those elements and really play with those values. Color them in, get your dark, your medium, and your light, you know, and and not much more than that. The whole idea is to not think about detail and simplify. Think about what you want to leave in. For example, I'm thinking about those rocks on the left hand side of the foreground and I want to leave those in so I've sketched those in I'm thinking about balance, which is why I have the little tree off to the right, and I'm showing a few of those trunks on that tree because I want to balance with a little bit of dark there, the very dark uh, foreground area. 
and that creates a balance in the painting. There's a lot of compositional things that I've talked about in a lot of my other videos, so I probably won't mention all of them, but this process of doing these little 5 by 7s and, and starting with this uh, value sketch, thumbnail sketch, is super important because it helps you think through this process and really decide, okay, what am I simplifying my elements to? What, where am I going to place them on the canvas? And what's most important to me? What can I leave out? What do I want to emphasize? So now that we have our thumbnail sketch done, the first thing that we're going to do to start our actual painting is to tone our canvas using a mixture of quinacridone gold and Hansa yellow. Just thin it out with a little bit of water and just cover the whole canvas to give ourselves a background. You want to choose a color for doing your toning of your canvas that you don't mind having peek through the other colors. So that's why I've chosen this kind of fall gold color that will really blend with the painting. I like to use the regular acrylics for this, this tonal base so that it dries quickly and I'm ready to go. So here you can see what that toned base looks like and the this little brush I'm using, it's just a uh, flat brush, about three-eighths of an inch wide, and that's the only brush I'm going to be using for this whole painting. Before you get started, you want to set a timer or you check your time because you don't want to spend any more than one hour on these paintings. The best thing to do is do one every day and just do one, one hour of painting time, and that forces you to loosen up which is really our goal, is to try to get ourselves to loosen up, think about the big picture, and not think about those details. Those are, those are what we're really trying to avoid. We're trying to set the foundation for our painting. The thing with using open acrylics over the uh, other acrylics that regular acrylics I've demonstrated in some of my other videos is you can't layer one layer on top of the other. Instead you have to fit the pieces together more like a jigsaw puzzle. You can do some blending and you can do a, put a little bit of color over color, but if you want to have an area that's going to be very bright and, and chromatic, vividly colored, or very light, then you really have to start with that color or one way to do it anyway is to just start with that bright vivid color that that you can save that area so that you don't mix in any of your other darker paints or muddier paint colors because the, the, the paints are really going to mix together and blend together. So to avoid mud, you're really going to have to start by, by putting those in. And what I did is mix some of my quinacridone gold and my yellow and started finding those shapes of the bright yellow trees that I'm going to use. I have my sketch up on my uh, on my easel right next to me. It's actually above where you can see in this video. Those are some sketches from previous paintings that I've done. But I refer to it often because I made subtle changes to the placement of the elements from the reference photo. So I have to really keep referring to my thumbnail sketch to remember that process that I've already gone through to decide what I wanted to do. I have a lot more paint on my palette than the ones that we're using for this painting so I just wanted to mention that. Uh, don't worry about the other paint colors I'm just basically sticking to the ones that I listed out earlier in, um, in the video the one color that you can't see and it's down low on my palette is that uh, Jenkins green and it's I'm pulling from that when I go down out of screen there. So now that I get the once you get the areas of the brightest color in that you're going to know you want to keep the next thing I did was start starting to lay down that value of the dark green foreground tree. I want to find that because that comparison is really important to the success of the painting. The comparative value between that dark spot and the light area of those trees 
So I laid down a little bit of that green so I could remember that and I could compare it and see where I was going. I also needed that because I have an area of the green trees that are behind the yellow trees and it's sort of a it's it's a green area and it's more in sunlight so I want to make sure that it's lighter than that green I put in the foreground and I want to also make sure that it's it's more neutralized and so remember you can neutralize a color by adding a little bit of its complementary color and that will help to neutralize or gray it down a little bit the green that I used, I, I set the pile right next to the value I'm using for my yellow trees because I want to keep in mind that I want those values in that background to stay all in that same light color, light value. So I added a little more of the ultramarine blue to that green because I'm looking for the value and the, and the color that I want to use for that, that single evergreen tree that's coming up behind them. And that evergreen tree being a little bit darker and being a different color will help those yellow trees to stand out. So I'm thinking about that as I'm laying it in. Starting with one color and going a little darker. The thing with these open acrylics like I was mentioning is they don't layer really well. So you can put down your first layer and then you have to increasingly use the side of your brush and just barely barely touch the canvas and just drop that color in if you want to add more colors otherwise if you use the end of your brush and you use a lot of pressure you will end up just scraping away that paint that you already laid down so here I've just uh, moved into a lighter green color that whole background area you notice I'm not doing any kind of detail. I'm just using that big brush and I'm thinking about just color and value, not worrying about specific tree shapes or anything. And that's the benefit of these studies. You, you just take all of that thought out of your mind as far as detail and instead focus on the values and the colors and the shapes. And those are the foundational elements for a successful painting. Still working with that quinacridone gold and yellow mixture. Finding that color that's going to stand out and really be vivid against the greens. I'm doing this painting, I'm doing this video in real time instead of speeding it up like I normally do because the painting time itself was only about 45 minutes and I think it could benefit you more to actually watch the colors I'm mixing and watch the brush strokes that I'm I'm laying down and that might help help you decide the the process and the steps you want to take for your little quick study paintings there's some ultramarine blue there and I added a little bit of that cadmium orange to it because what I'm looking for is a neutral color, a gray color. And that orange is the complement of the blue. And so that will uh, help to create a neutral color. Also added a little bit of red. Just wanted the color to move more towards the red. It's such a subjective thing. I'm trying to find the color I want for that. Uh, tree that's already lost all its leaves. I don't know if it's dead or if it's just lost all its leaves early, but it, it it's a nice gray counterpoint neutral color. And whenever you put neutral colors against the vivid colors, then the neutrals really help the vivid colors stand out because you can see that comparison. So I really like that tree being in there and wanted it to uh, help me make my uh, yellows and my golds stand out and be be more eye-catching. You notice how I take my time? I'm not necessarily brushing, 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 but I stop and I think about where I want to go next. There I'm just uh, 
taking back off some of the paint that I put down. I put some water on my brush and then just wiped it away because I want that tree to start up a little higher so I have more room for my um, some darker area under it and, and more of the bank. When you're using these open acrylics as opposed to the regular acrylics, you do have to do that. You have to either, if you want to change your where you're going completely with an area, change the color, change the value, you have to either scrape it away with your palette knife or wipe away that paint with your paper towel in order to keep from having you know just the layers underneath blend with the layers on top and creating mud. You don't want mud, you want to try to keep your colors clear, your brush strokes clear, and just lay down a, a simple color note. I'm exploring putting in different colors but maintaining the same value. I want to keep that whole area back there in that same light value. So you can change your color, you can create a little form by using cooler colors next to warmer colors, so purples and blues next to oranges and yellows. Those oranges and yellows are going to seem to come forward and be brighter even though they're you maintain all the same values or similar values Moving back into some darks, using the ultramarine blue and the quinacridone gold, and getting, adding some sort of bluish, very bluish colors to that green tree back there. The blending aspect of these does allow you to shift the color by blending what you've got on the canvas with what you're putting down. So I can add a little bit of a lighter tone or a darker tone and blend those colors together right on the canvas and um, you'll get a nice nice blend there and can shift the color that way as well. Don't forget to rinse your brush often, wipe it off in between make changing colors. That really helps you keep your your colors clean as you're going along Going back into re-emphasizing the yellows, playing more with those yellows. You'll notice I'm using my Stay Wet canvas, or my Stay Wet palette here, and I'm using it just with the plastic. When you use the regular acrylics, you need to have something to keep them moist, so I use a paper towel and a uh, disposable palette paper, and then put my pa paint on top of that. Um, but when you're using these open acrylics, you don't have to worry about that. These are just straight on the plastic palette, and when I'm done painting, I can just clean off the mixing area and leave my piles of paint around the edges. And as long as I seal up that palette with it, the lid, when I'm done, they'll stay moist in there. If you have to leave them for a, quite a while that way, I would take a little piece of paper towel, fold it up, get it pretty wet and just lay it inside the palette before I closed it up. Say so you were going to leave it for a week or two before you used them again. But I generally use them within a day or two and I haven't had any trouble with them going dry. So this is just a process you're, you're thinking about, you know, time has elapsed. I've, I'm probably about 15 minutes into this painting so far. So you want to think about that and keep moving forward as you're as you're going. Don't let yourself stop and start fussing with the details. Just move on. You can always come back if you want to. Now I'm putting in some of those um, reflections from the trees into the water. 
And remember reflections, all we're doing is taking the same colors, putting them in vertical downward strokes. Don't try to form or shape or draw or the forms above into the reflections. Instead, just use your brush and pull straight down into the water. Use the same colors, but just pull straight down. You can see how I'm doing that there, just using the colors that I used up above and pulling straight down. And the benefit, another benefit of these open acrylics is I can do this and leave those strokes for a while and then come back later after I've got all my colors in where I want them to be and blend them out a little bit and, and add a few horizontal strokes. But I, everything I put above, I can just add that same color directly below it in these straight vertical brush strokes. Simple, simple for these studies. Adding in the yellows and golds, some fresh paint to make those reflections as well. These are really fun to do. They're, they go so quickly and, you know, once that hour is up, you just want to drop your brush and do a different one if you didn't like how that turned out. But this exercise of moving quickly, thinking about your brush stroke before you put in, it down, put it down and leave it, is just so good for helping you in your, in your larger paintings and helping you loosen up. The brush strokes are loose, but what what you don't want to be loose is your colors and your values. Now there you can see I'm just very, very gently making a few horizontal brush strokes to blend those colors together. And that also gives you the horizontal sort of movement of the water and the feel of the water. Do that with a clean brush. Be sure you rinse your brush off real well before you do that and, and get the water off of it with your paper towel. You don't want that to be wet. Okay, now I'm going back to these foreground, this foreground area. And you notice I referenced my thumbnail sketch again because I really want to think about now where was I going to put this? Where did I decide to place it in my comp composition? I just blocked that all in with that same kind of a greenish blue using that Jenkins green with some ultramarine blue added to it. I'm mostly just going for the value here. I know I can adjust the color a little bit as I go, but I want to get that value in. Get the placement of the shapes and get the right value. So I'm just getting a little water on my brush and erasing off that that first tree trunk I put down that I didn't like where it was placed. In the thumbnail sketch I have this tree trunk really uh, obvious and dark against the light background and the more I look at it as I'm painting it I make the decision in a little while to instead put just some lighter green foliage behind it a little more like the reference photo but I just felt that that Tree, that drew too much attention to the tree trunk to have it so dark against the light background and it's really kind of a supporting character it's not the important part I'd rather the eye go back into the painting and into the fall colors instead of stopping there at the tree trunk going down and getting some more Jenkins green if you don't have Jenkins Green, you can use 
phthalo blue with some quinacridone gold it makes a really sim similar color or you can even use ultramarine blue with that um, quinacridone gold added it's really just a sort of a time-saving thing to use a mixed green I don't always do that you can also mix yourself up a pile of green before you start using a blue and a yellow of your choice and that will help speed things up as well I just added a little white to it this time to get this um, sort of little variation in values there slightly lighter I know I want this whole area to be in shadow so I'm not going to make anything very light there remember everything in shadow needs to be darker than everything in the light so you you have to use color and slight value changes to keep an area in shadow I use some uh, red there some crim that's alizarin crimson which um, I didn't add to the palette for this painting and the only reason I used it is I just was put some red and green together to make a dark color and you don't you can use um, some of the ultramarine blue with quinacridone gold and some of the uh, naphthal red that you have on the palette you don't have to use that alizarin crimson I was just making a neutral dark and then I went ahead and added more blue to it some more white to it I'm just playing with some neutral gray colors you can always also use ultramarine blue and cadmium orange to make your your neutral dark you can use your Jenkins green and your naphthal red that too is a complementary color if you don't have that alizarin crimson I just use that alizarin crimson because it's a little darker but it's not necessary finding those shapes altering my colors remember this is this is a these are finished brush strokes we're putting down so it's not like when we do a block in if you've watched any of my other paintings so I am thinking about keeping the colors clear and keeping my brush strokes uh, kind of bold and and descriptive you know you don't you don't want to mush them around you don't want to blend them around until they disappear instead just put those strokes down and leave them let them speak for themselves if they're in the right value in the right color in the right place you'll get a nice little a little study without fussing and that's what our goal is to train our hand not to fuss I emphasized from the reference photo I emphasized a little more that rock jutting out from the bank I just thought it added a little more interest and broke up the reflection a little bit also gives that dark area gives uh, gives more of a contrast against the light reflections and just a little more interest in that area which is why I chose to enlarge it so along that bank in the back you know you're gonna have to uh, bring in some sort of grade I'm using that neutral kind of gray color that's a little bit lighter to define some some rocks and and things and, and sand that's right along the bank of that water there so you'll have the lighter area and then right where the water meets the bank you're going to need a little bit of a shadow area so you have to just lay that in with your with your the side of your flat brush and cut that along where the bank meets the water and get find that little bit of a darker value I know I, I need that whole area in the back to be light but it's gonna still have there'll be shadowed areas under the trees and under the bushes there'll be some shadowed areas here and there that so that that whole back area isn't just kind of washed out and pastel instead 
just these little touches of dark will integrate the darks of the shadow area in back into the painting and they'll they'll show the light better if you if you have a little bit of the dark there adding some more that Jenkins green with some yellow added to it just to give myself and and then there's a little bit of blue too and then a little bit of white giving myself a variety of green colors there it's important to when when you're creating these sort of natural areas where there's a lot going on you don't have to paint a lot of forms in there but if you just shift up your colors a little bit it gives the impression that there's a lot of stuff going on so I just vary my greens different amounts of gold yellow blue white you know varying those colors a little bit just looking at I look at the, what I do is look at the reference photo and then just pick out some colors I see some colors there and then try to match those colors going back to that the simple shapes that I formed I knew I, I want the dark tree there's a lighter bush that comes out from the left and the, a darker area below that so I want to keep referencing back to that sketch to remember what it was I was trying to do so here I'm coming in with a color that's got more blue in it a green that has more green in it blue in it and more white in it to to drop in that little lighter um, bush and remember with these opens they're going to mix with what's underneath so in order for that to be a little bit lighter I have to go kind of quite a bit lighter with the paint on my palette and then when I brush it up there it's going to mix a little bit with that dark that's already on the canvas and and darken down a little bit more thinking about the shape of this little tree here I don't want it to be real straight and even I want there to be uh, some variations in the edges even more so than shows on the reference photo it creates kind of a straight line in the reference photo and instead I want it to to come out and create a more interesting shape You notice I'm using the flat of the brush at times and at other times I'm using the side or the corner of the brush. You really have a lot of flexibility with this one uh, brush actually. You can make a lot of different marks, thin marks and thick marks. But not switching to the smaller brushes really helps you in the loosening up process. It's really key to that process of not going into the detail, avoiding that detail. Don't forget to stop and think. Step back from your painting if you can. I have a mirror, full length mirror that I set up behind myself when I'm painting. That way I can turn around and look in the mirror and see an image of the painting as if it's from far away. So if you're sitting to paint like I am here and and you, so you can't step back easily. Having that mirror set up behind you is really helpful. Going back in with my grays, getting a little bit more of those neutrals. I want that, that gray tree to have a slight pink tone to it. I don't want it to be a dull co color. I want it to it's, it's still a neutral gray, especially against all those vivid bright colors, but I want it to have a little flavor, a little leaning, not just be a dull color. Whenever you use a color in, in a painting, you want to think about adding it in one or two other places. Having a single color that's just isolated in your painting makes it look like it's pasted in and not a part of the, the whole painting. 
Don't forget to add those reflections whenever you change anything above. Go ahead and drop the reflections into the water as you go. Rinsing the brush, drying it off a little bit before I go into my next color. Establishing a few more darks. I want that evergreen tree there behind there to have a little more presence, be a little darker and by doing that it makes the yellow and yellows and golds in the trees pop more because it has that gold that it's compared or that darker green it's comparing to. Now I'm moving into some more lighter gold colors. I want to be sure to keep that that color clean. I had to change my paper towel there because it wasn't very helpful in cleaning off my brush anymore. It was so wet and dirty. So I'm a little out of frame there, but I'm just using the Quin Gold and the yellow again to go back and restate once more those yellow trees. Those are really my focus in this painting. So I'm going to spend the most time refining the color and value. You notice I'm not refining detail. I'm just comparing that color now to the other things that I've put in and refining those colors and those values. Decided to add a little bit of that gold to that tree to integrate it with the rest of the painting and to show that it just has a few more leaves left on it that haven't fallen yet. I hope you'll try these little these little paintings there. I'm just having such a fun time with them. They're you're not very invested in either time or money in your materials, so you can have a lot of fun and try something you wouldn't normally try in terms of a composition or a color or a subject matter and uh, just really enjoy the process. You can fit them in here and there. You know, if you've got maybe 20 minutes to do your prep work and your thumbnail sketch and an hour to paint. So if you can set aside an hour and a half, you can use it as a warm up to go on for the rest of your painting day in a bigger painting or you can just use it as that little bit of time that you were able to squirrel away from the rest of your busy schedule. adding some greens in the bank just different combinations of that yellow and the gold and the blue and the green and being sure to drop in the reflections as I go right below it back with the dark even though that dark is very dark on my palette, again, when you're working with the opens, it's going to blend with the color that's already there. And I have a lot of light colors right along that bank. So I'll, I'll be putting it in. It, you know, it's very dark coming from the palette, but it's going to blend a little bit. And you can go back in and smooth off the edges, blend off the edges a little bit so you don't have quite such a a thick dark line back there which you don't really want because it is in the distance. I'm trying to find a clean spot on my palette to make some some very light white. So I'm using basically pure white here and it's okay in this situation because again it's going to blend with the color that's below it. And so it won't come, it won't end up being pure white. Instead, it's going to blend a little bit with those colors. So on the bank of a river like that, you're going to have the, the bank, then you're going to have the dark shadow at the edge of the bank, and then you're going to have the water line where the water laps right up against the bank. It's going to create a little ripple or a little bit of white. Adding that 
lighter value, adding a little bit of the lighter value so that that, that um, leafless tree has light, medium, and dark areas to it. Blending edges now. If there's, I've laid down that darker, that little darker brush stroke, and I don't want it to really stand out as super dark against the light. So with these open acrylics, it's real easy just to go in and lightly brush across the edges of the brush stroke, and you just blend them out and, and soften those edges a little bit. Here I'm, I've got some, some blues moving more into a little, adding a little bit of sort of a blue color. It's got blue, it's got some red in it, and some white in it, just to vary those colors. And blue is a complement of orange, so if you can just touch a little bit of blue in there, here and there, it's going to help those, it's going to vibrate against the oranges in the, um, the trees and create a little more activity, interest, vibration back there. Again, this is all done not with detail. It's all just done with color and value. A little bit of that blue. You can see how fairly vivid that bluish, purplish color looks on the uh, on the palette, but it, as you put it in and blend it in with what's already on the canvas, it just gives you a little subtle color change, a little subtle shadow color in there. Take your time to think and reflect. Take your time to ask yourself, what's drawing my eye? What, what draws my eye where it shouldn't be? And how can I change that? How can I make that more interesting? For me, looking at this, I was just feeling like I needed to add a little more interest in that focal area, a little more contrast, adding a little more of the, the white water lapping against the shore right in that area, because that's where I want that eye to go. And your eye will always go to areas where there's contrast. Light against dark, sharp edges, color contrast, that's what draws your eye. Continuing to add now just some horizontal strokes to indicate the, the water. Those horizontal strokes that, that pass all the way across the shapes that you have in your reflection helps the eye to understand that this is water that, that uh, we're looking at here. Now blending those out, just grabbing the edge of that little white stroke and pulling it outwards to feather it out so it's not such a, a blocky shape there. Blending and feathering it. And set, step back and sit back and take a look at that and see if it's done what you want it to do. As you get down to the end of a painting like this, you will find that it really helps to spend more and more time just looking at the painting and less and less time with your brush adding more paint, especially in, in a quick study like this. Added a little more light side to that rock. Okay, picking up a little of my cadmium orange now and adding yellow. I'm mixing out of your, your view there. But my concept in looking at that was I just wanted to brighten up and punch up those trees a little bit more. So I went straight to the pure cadmium orange and the pure uh, hands of yellow to give it some 
some punch and some vivid color. It's all about the comparisons. So once you get the rest of it down, you can decide what needs to be punchier and then bring that down into the reflections. We only have about, oh, about five minutes, four minutes left of the painting at this point. So I'm really just taking my time and thinking about whether or not that's all that, that I'm wanting to do there. It's pretty, there's a lot of paint now in that area, so those, those colors that I'm putting in are really blending with each other. You can get a stroke to stay on top, but you have to just ha have quite a bit of paint on your brush and then do just a real light, light stroke and just barely touch. Let the paint kind of pull itself off. I want to add a little darker back into the base of those trees to just kind of give the impression of, of, of trunks and whatnot going down and shadowed areas going on there, but I don't want to draw in any trunks and be very, because I don't want any detail. So put that a little bit of darker color and then I took yellow and just some white and a little bit of red just to kind of make a slightly different variety of an orange so I'm mixing a like slightly orangey yellow just by adding a little bit of red to it this time and some white and then see if I like that just playing with those colors those fall colors now if I were to take this study and go on and make a, a larger painting from it, these are the things that, that, that I would have figured out by doing this study, is what colors do I want to use to represent these trees? How bright do I want to go? How vivid? How light? We, can't, we don't want to add a lot of white. You'll notice these last few colors, I've added hardly any white because the um, the white is just going to make the color more pastel and more chalky. If you want a vivid color, you need to keep it as pure as you can out of the tube and then darken the colors around it in order to get something that looks lighter. A little bit of gold along the edge as well. And we're just about done. I hope you uh, take the opportunity and try some of these little studies. Be sure and do your thumbnail sketch and use them to warm yourself up for a bigger painting, to practice your loose brush strokes, and I think uh, you'll find you really enjoy them. They're a lot of fun. I've been trying to do one almost every day, and you get into kind of a rhythm, and it's a great deal of fun. Be sure to join me on my art community website, paintwithkarenalari.com. It's a free website, and you are more than welcome to join us to share your paintings with the other painters on the site. I think that's about it for this little painting. Thanks for joining me today.